So I want to hear, the first question I have is, what do you understand about the new Chihak Knight? Just tell me what you, just tell me what you understand about the changes that are made. There's now an official membership system, and that membership system sort of comes with specific power. What else? Maybe you don't notice any differences. It kind of looks the same, doesn't it? I think the language on the website is just a bit confusing, how the nav bar says join. And how is that different from attend? And so I'm afraid it might actually discourage people from attending if they think they have to join in order to attend. Ah, and so that's a great point. Just, just, my, just my first reaction, how I saw it. Um, I think it's a great initiative. Just make it really clear on the website. Excellent. To that point as well, I know, like, I think I first found out about Chai Hack Night through Meetup, and I don't know if, like, does this still exist on meetup.com? It never did. It never did. Okay. Okay, so apparently never did, but um, maybe, that's, maybe that's another way to get more people to come because I know people, like, it suggests different events on Meetup, and maybe that can, like, integrate with the website somehow. Great. Anybody else want to chip in on that? Uh, so I think this is good. Uh, what I uh, really like about this, um, the first Chai Hack Night I, I, I went to uh, was back when it was in 1871. Um, but then I would like, I didn't find any particular project that clicked, and I wouldn't uh, come back for like a year. And then I'd sort of pick, you know, stick my head in another year later um, until Steve, I finally found your project, and like that worked well. Um, but it wasn't clear like. Okay, if if I didn't find anything that one night, how do I get more involved? Um, and now it seems like there's more of an explicit like, okay, you want to get more involved? This is how you do it. So um, thank you for pulling that together. I find that very helpful, um, and I will want to do that. Great. So uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So there's a lot of times where we have um, open hacks because there's not a speaker available. Are there opportunities for anybody just to come up, not to host, but to give a talk? Like me, I want to give a talk. What is the process to do that? Cool, that's a great idea. And we have had that in the past, and we haven't had it recently, where we had lightning talks. Or even the yeah. We have yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, the open hacks are, are not specifically because we couldn't get a speaker that night. It's so that some groups have a little bit longer to work, uh, at least once a month, uh, longer to work on their project. To answer your question about presenting, uh, we do have a process. That is one of the processes we figured out a while ago. Um, speaker submissions is at the footer of, the p of every page. Um, and essentially, all you have to do is email booking at chihacknight.org with a pitch, and then we'll um, either accept or reject that pitch. Uh, but there's a process, and there it is. <laughs> hey, Derek. Or, um, so I didn't announce this in the beginning when we were hosting, but like, what are projects that people work on for people who are brand new here? And we keep referring to projects and, and hacks. Like, what are those oh. things? Well, there, uh, there are a lot of different breakout groups. Uh, there's one called Quantifying Justice that's doing some uh, web scraping of, uh, of criminal, criminal data, the, uh, sorry, the newspaper accounts of crimes, uh, and then comparing that to the, uh, to the police blotter uh, about what actual, actual crimes were, uh, were reported to the police uh, and seeing what the difference is and how that gets reported in the news. Uh, there are others, uh, Tom Schenk did a, uh, predictive analytics uh, uh, breakout group uh, that beat the EPA uh, predictive analytics for determining E. coli on a beach, um, which takes 24 hours to turn around. So if you want to shut the beach down that day, you are a day late. So, uh, and that improved the EPA hit rate by about 30%, I think. 60%, uh, six, I'm sorry. 
Um, and for those of you who are new, uh, there will be time at the end of this to hear breakout group pitches. Um, but it is also worth noting that Chai Hack Night does not dictate projects. And we haven't done that in the past. And, and when I say Chai Hack Night, I mean the, the leadership of Chai Hack Night, the board of Chai Hack Night. Um, that's something that we've never directed groups to tell them what to do. Um, it's always been self-organized. And so if it's a project that you think needs to happen, then it's on you to make it happen. Um, and we just create the space for you to meet, find like-minded individuals, we'll feed you, we'll give you advice. Um, and there's actually some plans we have in the future now that we have more uh, capacity as a board to provide assistance to breakout groups. But that, I just want to be really clear, like we don't tell people what to do. It's a cr like a core value of Chai Hack Night for it to be self-directed. Um, and also, like, I don't want to ever have that responsibility. Like, I have a lot of ideas, but like, the point is to empower other people to run with their own ideas. And that's just something that we've always done and will continue to do. It's, that's not changing. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and I think I brought this up a long time ago when you started the conversation about organizing. Um, I know Derek doesn't like the idea of being an activist organization, but you can have like a recollection or a history so that if organizations want to become activist organizations, you can help them along. Um, these are, this is the type of thing that I think would be very helpful if there's an organization like that wants to get going and maybe it's one person only. And you see this very often that there's only one person and they don't quite know where to go or how to do it and stuff like that. And having those, that kind of direction is very useful. Um, I can say from personal experience, because I went to college before there was an ADA, being the one person who has to run around campus all the time and get everything organized is really annoying. It's nice when you have like some kind of uh, structure there that helps you kind of get through everything without having to be the one person that remembers, oh, you got to talk to this person or this is a good contact person and things like that. So that's my one comment about what would be great if you guys could do. So. Great. Uh, well, you notice that uh, we have board members here that are, crowd that are crowdsourcing the notes here. So we are going to be taking this back and uh, dissecting it. Yes. Um, I have a question. It might be about language, too. I'm not sure. So it's about um, becoming a member, and so the word is apply. So does that mean, in theory, or is it possible that you wouldn't, you would be rejected, or your application, like you wouldn't? Well, it would be, it would be possible because of the, uh, the requirements. You have to prove the requirements, uh, but only because of that. It's not an exclusive organization, and you have to, you have to score, you know, you have to score 1,200 on the SAT or something before you get it. But in. instead of join, <laughs> join you know, yeah, I suggest yeah. that it uh, is exclusive maybe, just to pick up on the, yeah, the language yeah. thing, but that's all. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Yeah. I'm going to become involved. I'm going to skip this next question and go on to the next set of questions. What makes you feel positive about our new organization? It's my first time here, and I'm really happy to read the Code of Conduct. I think it's really thoughtful, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Having been at that first leadership facilitation 18 months ago and then dropping off completely, it's nice to see that a ton of work has gone into this. <laughs> I like that it uh, gives you an opportunity to be more socially engaged in the civic community overall. Like, Shy Hack Night doesn't just promote Shy Hack Night, which a lot of organizations have the tendency to do, and then also take care of their, you know, board of trustees or shareholders or anyone who sponsors that specific organization where Shy Hack Night actively engages, you know, to use the term, the user, as we all, you know, participate in this activity. It gives us all a chance to be socially conscious more actively overall as opposed to just participate in Shy Hack Night as much as mathematically possible. It gives you so many different opportunities to be civically engaged in so many different activities. Hey, well, who else feels positive? Okay. <laughs> a lot of folks feel positive. I saw a lot of smiles. Um, so 
you know, this is, I've been coming to Chi Hack Night for a little bit, and I, it makes me feel positive that I can actually, like, there's a system where I can actually, like, host and, like, express that, like, I'm interested in helping out in some way. I'm super positive about the 501c3 status in particular. I think that's a really awesome step, so congratulations on that. And I know it takes a ton of work. And I feel like that it, it may open up op opportunities for new kinds of partnerships with other organizations, either in government or other nonprofits, um, fundraising, of course. So I'm super excited about that. Sort of ch ch changing the direction. Oh, sorry. Oh, Cameron. One more, and then we'll go on to the oh, next more, question. The more positive stuff, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the reasons I feel really positive is, um, so we have events where there's really high attendance, like um, the assessor data or um, ATF, but there's also a lot of interest and involvement when we're talking about um, artificial intelligence ethics for potholes in the city of Chicago, and I think. Um, that stuff happens at the ground level. It really is just people that are taking initiative on these fronts, and it's citizens. And I don't mean citizens like the formalities of being citizens, just someone who lives in the city. And um, that's really encouraging to see. And I think um, Shy Hack Night has always been an incubator, not just of ideas that are coming together and being expressed and shared and talked about, um, but also um, I met a lot of really interesting people here um, who I'm very glad to know and to continue to know. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I feel really positive about um, the formal organization, because I think it will help to further cultivate some of the things that I really appreciate about the organization and that I think other people have expressed that they enjoy. Good. Let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, how or what do you anticipate for the next year? What are you thinking about? What are you interested in? What is engaging you? I haven't been coming for very long, so this may be something Shy Hack Night's always done, but I'm hopeful that with a 501c3 status, it might be easier to partner directly with the city, county, or state on some projects. I came for the empanadas, I stayed for the community. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Oh, yeah, and um, can we get something else besides empanadas? Not that I don't like the empanadas, but now we're we're a nonprofit now, so we we, we can get some food sponsors in here. <laughs> That's a great idea, food sponsors. We'll put that on the list. All right. What else are you, are you anticipating? What's just like uh, really uh, ringing your chimes these days in civic tech? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, I think someone mentioned this, that, you know, we can have more uh, great speakers and more diverse speakers and, you know, just or hearing back from people. You know, there's people that came and talked maybe four years ago and maybe let's, let's catch up with them, see, like, what's different, you know, how they, it, did they do the thing that they said they were going to do or did something happen, did something get in the way, did, like, what happened? And also, I'd, I'd like a little bit from, from you, from me too, and from the rest of the board about how are, are we defining civic tech, right? Is it just anything that touches like kind of civic data. So like for example, um, uh, would a psychiatrist who works at UIC who um, works with you know homeless patients and maybe doesn't do anything like tech wise but like kind of understands the, the homeless system and, and understands some of the problems that they face, is, is that civic tech? Is that, you know, that's more public health I suppose, but is there a civic tech component of that I suppose? Or maybe you know the maybe a way we can help um, something where like a civic tech might be a solution to a problem rather than like this is a thing that it already is civic tech. Well, we're not going to be able to answer that tonight, but uh, <laughs> Melissa had a... I don't know your name, so I can't hear myself. Um, what I would like to see more is accessibility because I know I've mentioned that to Sarah a few times, but um, that's the area where, where the, the governor, the last governor, that's the new one, with the last governor shutting down a lot of um, 
Now the work days will shut down because of um, the budget cuts and everything. The so one work days is out there have overcome those budget cuts and what they're doing now and what they're, and then we're collaborating with them because, you know, people don't talk about that the building now. That the building now is a new half word intact, but I think we should do definitely do more of that stuff. Great. Anybody else? So, uh, given our new situation here, the new Chai Hack Night, uh, what feedback do you have for us? What do you want to see put in place? Some more documents about the leadership structure and the new organization structure would be great to see on the website. Like, I don't know whether the leadership council is still a body that exists or if it's been completely absorbed by the board or how any of that works now. Uh, one thing I'd like to see in some of the speakers is a little more like technical depth, I guess. Um, I'd love to see a little more about like, I don't know, code or um, the different math that someone's using to like do the EPA model or something like that. Um, I feel like often the speakers sort of focus on the like what it is and and why it's important and those are very interesting and obviously ought to be touched on as well but I think a lot of people including me come because we sort of have an interest in the tech side as well as the civic side um, and sometimes to me it feels like the speakers are a little too weighted in the other direction so that's my okay back uh, this might be kind of the same question but is there a specific direction we should be heading <laughs> is there a, uh, you know, a specific actions that we should be taking? Are there specific speakers that you want to be hearing from? Do you have ideas? Lori Lightfoot recently won the election, first black woman, and she's trans intersectional because she's also part of the LGBT community. I think that's very important as a mayor. Um, I believe she was formally inaugurated yesterday. And Derek is part of her transition team. Let's get Lori Lightfoot in here and shut this place down. I'm working on it. <laughs> Great. Um, I would actually push back a little bit about the idea of having more highly technical speakers. I, I think every once in a while it's a good thing. But part of what makes this community really great is that it is extremely interdisciplinary, that there is a sense of being able to come in, whether you're a tech person, a policy person, or just an involved community member, and you can get something out of this event. And I think our breakout groups do a really good job at that, but I would be afraid of having very highly technical presentations scare people away before they get the chance to collaborate with folks in a breakout group. Thank you. Uh, I just have to say, I get as much feedback about wanting more technical <laughs> discussions as I get from people who want less technical <laughs> discussions. So it's, I, I don't know, we're kind of, we're walking some kind of a line there. <clears throat> Are there things that you, sh oh, you oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I would love to see Shai Hack Knight become more involved with sister organizations in other cities. Uh, and I, I, I guess the question would be whether the new organization changes in, in any way um, uh, Shay Hackknight's relationship with Code for America as a Code for America brigade, and maybe it doesn't change that at all, but I'm, I'm kind of curious how that works out. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, quick comment on the more, on having more technical speakers. Um, one, person's te one person's appropriately technical is not another person's appropriately technical. As a data scientist, more like modeling intensive presentations would be interesting to me, but more like software engineering intensive presentations would be way out of my depth. So I think, I think if we do get technical, there would intentionally be narrower audiences for each presentation and sort of narrow the breadth of Um, as I mentioned, this is my first out of a 350 meeting, so I don't necessarily feel qualified to give a direction that I think that Shai Hack Knight should be heading, but um, I guess from my 
for my personal interest and my experience working in policy, I would love to come to any sessions that directly um, engage with or mention in the presentation the digital divide in public policy, um, which is something that I experience all the time. Um, and I really appreciated your comment, Brian, about how um, a public health worker might not know it, but they are part of some sort of civic tech infrastructure, um, and how uh, decreasing that digital divide can help provide some solutions within their policy and their job. Need to make a rebuttal. <laughs> I think we um, no, I'm I'm kidding. I have a I have a totally different I have a totally different thing. Um, I've been with with the uh, the article tagging project for like almost two years now, and the thing I think to yeah anyway um, the thing I've liked most about it is that uh, Tracy who's hiding in the calf right now came in like from an outside organization with an idea and like wanting technical help um, and that I think has uh, partly been like the glue that's held this group together for so long um, and I I'd love to see Shai Knight try to draw in more like outside organizations, civic or nonprofit or whatever, that could use people with, with the technical skill um, to work with. I would, I would like that a lot. Uh, to follow up with that, um, uh, just like a personal anecdote is, I believe someone from um, um, uh, the Center on Halstead came here uh, over the summer, I believe, um, and um, I, I reached out to them about, you know, like, like their, their talk was focused on like, you know, we are still like, you know, in the mom and pop stages of, of using data, even though we are this huge center on Halstead, like we have all this funding, whatever, we're still like doing things in Excel sheets and whatever. And I think like, I, I reached out um, on behalf of my company um, and, and maybe they just don't want to work with my company or whatever, but like, you know, we didn't hear anything back. So I don't know if there is, yeah, like, I agree, like getting more people to come in and help, um, but then making sure that that relationship can continues, right? And like making sure that they can continue to come and, you know, operate groups or, or things like that and have that be like kind of like a formal structure perhaps. There was, yeah, one, one more question in the back and uh, one more answer in the back and then we'll go to the question, another question. Um, I, I got here late, so I don't know if this was already uh, commented on, but um, it would be nice if we had like a once a year meeting where we asked people what direction they wanted, um, kind of like how we're doing now. Um, I think this is like really interesting and it kind of like makes me think about things and I think it'd be cool to do it like as an anniversary or something like that. That was the intent tonight. <laughs> All right. Are there things we should be doing that you don't see getting done? It's more of a question for the new membership. Who's keeping track of how many nights people attend Hack? We have been gathering that data, um, and I've been trying to get that data since I'm the I'm on the new members uh, new members team uh, for some time now. It hasn't reached my desk yet, but we I know. It. But we yeah. ha we have the data. Yeah, we get um, data from. Uh, Braintree, they sh like the list that you, they check, we get that, and that's how we're doing it. Yeah. Process. And that's how, and that's how we'll uh, decide uh, on membership, you know, how many meetings you attended in the last year, et cetera. Yeah, and yeah you can't just RSVP for eight events, or 15 events in your end, you have to show up. <laughs> we'll be checking that. <laughs> on, on a similar note, um, I know there's a lot of people who come for the first time, and then um, then never come back, right? So getting some more metrics around like how many people come for the first time and like does that like is that increasing over time? Is that decreasing over time? Um, like you know how many people are meet, reaching the the five meeting milestone, the ten meeting milestone, things like that. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we've sort of had an ad hoc approach to this so far, but uh, now with tonight we've got the everything set up finally, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be doubling down on getting that information and recording it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just a comment, uh, a comment about that. Um, we want you to, if you want to apply, apply now, please do. Um, the moment when it will actually like solidify into something like a, a membership body is going to be in January of next year, right? That's when we're going to have our first general meeting as a, as a membership. And that's actually when our first um, round of elections will happen as well. So essentially we're in this sort of interim period where 
folks are applying to become members and then we'll be sort of uh, in this sort of pre-membership state until that moment in January when all of a sudden it's like, okay, who's, who actually meets the requirements? What's our membership? And then that membership will exercise its, its power. Um, so we're in that sort of state be be between now and January. Anything else that's missing? This is one that I know has come up many, many times over the years, but different ways of supporting breakout groups more formally and giving them resources to be able to recruit members, retain members, have successful projects, things like that. We do have a breakout support group that's, uh, that's gearing up right now. Yeah, okay. One point that I did want to add, just as context, is um, part of the formalizing of the organization includes um, board committees that have, um, as their goals, advancing on some of these particular areas. Um, and it will be our job to make it more clear how to work with or communicate with those committees. This is part of that. Um, but I just wanted to provide that as uh, context. Additionally, um, for uh, our next open hack, um, we'll be speaking with um, our breakout groups. We had to move the last one, but um, we there will be an opportunity for the breakout group leaders and folks who are interested in breakout groups to convene. So something that we very much want to further and hear more about. Well, yeah, Jonathan. On the membership side, if we do apply, when when do we when should we expect to hear? Feedback is that not till January, or is there going to be something saying, "Oh yes, you're a member," and then will there be will there be cards? Oh, yeah. I'm going to work as soon as possible to actually, you know, call if, you know if the candidate uh, candidate or people who apply, um, and also I'm. Um, Looking for maybe a designer to design the Chai Hack Night membership card? That'd be great. <laughs> um, one more, and then we need to move on. Uh, is there an intention of doing more on the road events? I attended an event at DuSable Museum several months ago, maybe even a year ago. And it seems to me it would be nice to take the conversation into community and use that experience, especially around uh, community challenges and opportunities. So to discuss uh, hacking around conversations that relate to the needs of the community in the community. We've had, uh, we've had a series of break uh, 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 satellite events in Logan Park. And then, uh, uh, Logan Square, I'm sorry. Uh, um, and uh, we, did, uh, we did a series last year, and then, I mean, the year before last, and then, uh, or last year at the beginning of the year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, toward the end of the year, we did something down at South Shore uh, that was pr pretty successful. Um, so we, uh, it's my full intention to get back to that and, and put more uh, events out in the community. Uh, are there particular groups that you would like to see here, either as presenter groups or people or groups of people that you think should be involved that are not involved in the organization? I think, um, like, uh, I, I don't remember any presentations from uh, cultural institutions, so things like the Cultural Center or like museums necessarily. Um, obviously, like, that is a big part of, I think, how people engage with the city, right? And they put on a lot of great programs and, you know, how they, you know, utilize their website to like their social media strategy to how they're thinking about uh, using just technology in general to engage the public is, is interesting. Any other groups that you would like to see us especially reach out to? Derek, can you um, specify the part about now that we're a 513C3 or applying for a week about political candidates and, and things of that nature? Oh, yes, sure, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so Melissa, I think, mentioned we had some governor, the four candidates for governor came and presented at Chai Hack Night. 
the way we did that um, uh, then, before we were a nonprofit, is actually the way we would do it going forward if we did do it again, which is we sent an invite to all candidates for a particular race and give them all equal opportunity. That's like the key phrase in the nonprofit world that the IRS cares about is equal opportunity. So you can engage in a political um, uh, way, but it has to be uh, done so in a way that it doesn't give one particular campaign favoritism. And so uh, we would do, if we did do that again, um, which I will say the governor's coming to speak, or like the biggest mixed bag as far as reaction, like some people loved it, some people were like, don't do that again. Um, so like there's a question about whether we will, but if we do, um, that's how we would do it, um, and we can if we wanted to. Katie. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that I've been thinking about as we've been talking about this is like definitely um, the fact that there are a lot of women who between probably like young career age and like older, um, there's like a big gap where a lot of women I think can't come. Um, so that's something that I think about. Um, Andre had one and then we'll come back. So is it, does it have to be like nonpartisan? Would it, would it be possible to host like a, a miniature debate like before an official debate for like front runners? We would have to ask everybody. We had to ask, we, we, we could not have just front runners. We'd have, we, have to have to, we would have to ask everybody, but we could do something like that. Hi, um, so this is my first time attending, so this is, I'm just kind of taking it all in. And I was checking out your website, and I see that you guys already have some projects that, that are in the lines. Do you have a, a, a quota or how many projects you can take for the year? Um, and what's, what are the requirements of getting those projects approved? And then my second was, um, I, I also saw the social media. And I'm not seeing that much engagement on there. So is a goal to get more members a part of this? Because um, I think social media would be a great avenue of like doing live streams and getting more engagement from people in terms of whatever work you're trying to achieve over here. Uh, to the first part about uh, breakout groups and projects, uh, we'll be going over kind of like what breakout groups are right after the presentation. and. Um, there, I don't think there are any, there are no limits. Um, I think we, we addressed this slightly earlier, but do you want to? Oh, um, yeah, I'll just quickly, yeah, I mean, it's, it's self-organized, so we don't dictate or, or limit or restrict or uh, anything as far as like what, breakout, what and how many breakout groups happen. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very much self-organized. Uh, as to the part about social media, um, we definitely can always uh, use any advice that you have on it. One of our subcommittees that we started is the social media subcommittee. And so you can come talk to me if you have any suggestions on how we could be doing things differently. Anyone else besides Andre before? You already want, you already talked a lot. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Okay. So I am a member of 1871, and before today, I had no idea that you guys used to be in there, so that was news to me. Um, I think it will be beneficial, since they're in the same building, to have a lot more uh, partnerships and collaborations between, between them, because I go there a lot, and they have great uh, investment pitches and uh, investors, and they do a lot of um, entrepreneurial workshops. And that's something that we could definitely leverage as our community um, and get some of those pitches here. So, um, and not just 1871, but the, uh, the Connectory as well, because they're another incubator who focus more so on the IoT. So I would like to see that. Great, well we have time for one more question. And I'm gonna ask you to, uh, if you answer this question, please state your name. And the reason I want you to state your name is because this is a question about where the rubber meets the road. We're really trying to uh, engage folks, and if you have an idea, we want to touch base with you on that idea and see what you're willing to help do to help uh, get that idea implemented, uh, but also check back and make sure that, you, that we understand what you're talking about. So what are you interested in working on to make these ideas happen? all of these ideas that we've been talking about. I can kick it off. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested in just more operational things. Uh, Emily uh, Drevitz, who normally does emceeing, uh, had like a breakout group last time about this, and I think we had like a bunch of ideas and just getting more organized around that. I th we took some steps in last week and just keep moving there. Brian Barrand is my name. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else? What would be the next steps you would take in, in helping us with your idea? Okay, this isn't a next step. This is Bruce Paul. Um, but it's an idea I had because I was talking about the activist stuff. Uh, having a grant writer or somebody who does that kind of stuff so that if there's an organization that wants to work on getting funding and stuff like that, somebody who had, like, again, this is the idea of having a knowledge center, having some kind of history, having an institutional history, and those kind of things. That's, that's the idea that I, I was having. Who else? Uh, Randall West, uh, if you run into any trouble with the 501c3 application, which tends to happen, I think more than 50% of the time, uh, I've been through that, so I could, I could help with that if you have any questions on that. Thank you. Uh, the name is Bruce Montgomery. Uh, if there's an idea to get broader public acceptance of uses of technology and or apps that would drive uh, adoption and use cases, um, maybe something like a, a shy hack or, or civic hack backpack, something that would suggest that these are some apps or applications or uses of data and technology that could benefit everybody that is a resident of Chicago. And so to promulgate that notion, uh, saying that this group that's been meeting for years thinking about highest and best uses of uh, data and apps that could benefit the broad constituents of the city, that we could have an effort to uh, promote that broadly and have kind of community-based exposure parties for this kind of thing, then uh, I would be willing to help uh, configure such a uh, activity and to promote it in a number of communities that I may have access to, so that there could be um, broad exposure to these things beyond those people that perceive themselves as tech-related, and try to get some real uptake for apps. And, and, and the goal is to get people to be more engaged about using their access to this way in ways that could benefit and uplift uh, some opportunities of people being smarter and using this in, in general ways. What he said. <laughs> Anybody else? Going once, going twice. We're going to give you more. Oh, oh, I see one back there. Thank you. Hi, my name is Samantha Evans. Um, I have something that's kind of like Bridges. Um, like the idea of like amping up like social media, but also providing resources to people. If we could do something where it's like featuring like, cause I know we have like a page that um, features like the successful projects like M Relief and others. So maybe something that um, like, like once a month, like either it's like a, a live conversation or just like um, something with like someone who's like actually continuing their work outside of Trihack Night and like featuring that on um, social media. Um, that's something that could also, you know, people who are still, like, the breakout groups that are still working within Shy Hack Night could use that as a tool or uh, something, like a resource, like, moving forward. I know you had mentioned earlier you wanted to implement a Did breakout you tell us your group. name? Oh, Megan Kraut. Um, a breakout group for breakout group, like, leaders. 
to learn more leadership skills. I think building on that, it might be helpful to maybe have a Slack channel that groups the different group leaders together to bounce ideas off of each other if they can't attend that meeting and maybe be like, hey, I'm having a problem with this or we can't get our work pushed out. What are some things that like y'all have done that might work in the past and just to bounce ideas off of each other? Excellent. Brian, I think you get the last word. Okay. Just to continue on this conversation, right? So being able to either edit this doc directly or just like, you know, some sort of easy Google sheet. Obviously, like, you can always email the website or email whoever, but like, then you don't get to see like where that goes, right? It might just go into like a black box. So being able to like see all the other ideas and, and just like continue to, to comment on this as people think of more ideas or they, you know, they're at a party and they talk to someone who they, they might be interested and they're like, okay, let's, let's like write that down right now before I forget, things like that. Great. We will, uh, we will open this document up um, and let the community uh, take a stab at it. Continue to, continue to have this conversation. We have many, many more conversations like this. And uh, whoever said once a year, yeah, at least once a year. But we want to give you an opportunity to get involved, to, uh, to ramp up to leadership, and uh, to make this Chai Hack Night really super fun and super productive in Chicago and very meaningful. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your participation tonight. <laughs>